Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, what have you guys been doing to stay healthy? What's like one thing that maybe we haven't talked about? Out. You know, it's working out. Body yeah. weight exercises. Get now and go for some run. True. True. My my clinic is still open, so I've been crushing it there. Nice. What Getting kind of all exercises? those cable weight exercises in. Oh yeah. A lot of cable weight exercises. Yeah, they're the best. Cable column best piece of equipment you can invest in it is kind of nice it is kind of nice i you do so much with it you really can you can literally do everything with a cable machine and it has Except the four that... degrees of motion or uh yeah yeah it's got like the swinging arms out so you can pretty much adjust it however uh the only thing that's really difficult to do is bench i have to like mm. take like a a pilates bar and like attach it to the cables on each side and like Wow. Jerry rig a bench with like a step up box and an air X pad on top of each other and a pillow and That's too much effort. Yeah. It's it's That's... it's a lot of effort just to get I'm... a nice bench in, but no. it feels so good. It feels so good. Yeah. I'm glad we're starting there. I'm glad we're starting that hey, we should all be exercising to make sure that we stay healthy. Um thanks for the guys that are tuning in right now. We're just gonna get started. Um we are live today for Q and A number nine for patreon and our patrons ask us questions about how to stay healthy how to optimize their performance really anything as it relates to esports medicine and performance for gaming and this week we had quite a few questions we had some questions um from our friend our newer our newer patron uh mr who do we have ten lie l T e n l a a e l. He asks a couple questions here, and the first question was relating to cold hands. So the the question states, "Hey, I have cold hands when I game. I get twenty minutes into a game of the league, and my fingertips are frozen. Um, and it might be related to my previous question, and we'll get to his previous question after this. But we wanted to broach this one first. But he wanted to know what the co- cause of this was and how can we go about keeping you know our hands warm so uh, i think we're gonna just throw it to elliot to see if he can get started with this because he's the master of cold hands apparently i do have really cold hands right now and it's just ironic that that's what we're talking about but uh yeah so really talk about why our hands get cold we have to kind of understand like the physiology um behind what's going on there so uh Temperature changes in your skin is usually associated with uh, blood flow. So that's going to be the big thing that we're going to be looking at when we're talking about cold hands. And there's a couple reasons that blood flow uh, and circulation to your fingers might not be so great. So there's some medical conditions, things like Raynaud's syndrome, uh, systemic lupus erythematosus, which is a mouthful, uh, rheumatoid arthritis or sclerodoma, Berger's disease, things like that. Um, that might be causing uh, cold hands if it's happening consistently and chronically and it's always a problem. Um, You should probably go talk to your doctor about something like that. That's not really something that we're trying to diagnose or make you think that you have. This isn't WebMD. Um, But we definitely want you to keep that in mind if this continues to be like a consistent chronic problem, especially if you have like numbness and tingling or anything like that going along with it. Other than that... um, If you have excessive numbness and tingling affecting your daily activities, definitely go see a doctor. But anyhow, so there are definitely things that gamers uh, can be specifically susceptible to that can cause cold hands when you're gaming. And those are things like sedentary lifestyles, stress, uh, overuse injuries, as well as caffeine caffeine or nicotine use or any other stimulant. Caffeine, hey. Caffeine. Just smashing those words together casually, you know, Uh, or other stimulant use, really. Um, If you're into any prescription um, or if you've been prescribed any prescription uh, kind of amphetamines, things like that, they can definitely have the same kind of uh, stimulant effect as caffeine or nicotine. Um, So let's get right into these things. First, we're going to talk about a sedentary lifestyle and how that affects the blood flow. Um, So when we sit for long periods of time, 
our body is not uh, pumping blood as effectively as it would be if we were getting continual regular exercise. And I think that's a really important thing for us gamers because we do spend a lot of time grinding it out um, for hours and hours and hours on end. And uh, blood flow is not as good as it could be. And then you combine that with some of the other stuff on this list, and you have like a perfect storm resulting in what could be uh, ending up as cold hands. So before we mixing, go on, before we yeah. go on, you know how what's the average for how long you guys typically play for? You know, I, for me, what's that? sometimes it can be up to two to three hours in a gaming session. I know a lot of the gamers that we work with; it's always up to eight hours, right? So they're sitting there, not really doing anything, letting the blood pool in their legs, and that's definitely going to affect the overall circulation. And yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So really consider that, guys. Right, number one, how how long really are you playing, right? Because definitely, the longer that you're playing, the longer that you're generally inactive, not moving the larger parts of your body, you're not going to have as great circulation all the way down to the tips and fingers of your hands. So. I think sedentary lifestyle is a super good place to start because, yeah, you know, a lot of us don't really realize, especially now that we're in the quarantine, how much we're sitting, how much we're not moving. And we underestimate that. Um, so I'm glad you started there. But I know besides that, you said stress, right? So what else? How does stress sort of cause us to maybe lead or how does stress sort of lead to cold hands? Right. So stress activates what we call the fight or flight response. And if anybody's ever uh, gotten startled or has experienced stress um, in any other way, you're really familiar with this, like kind of the tight chest, heart racing, uh, cold sweat feeling that you get that's associated with uh, basically your body's natural instinct to survive. Um, and when you activate that response, and we do this a lot as gamers, if anyone has ever been on like the 15th try on a boss and you're, he's got 10% HP left and he's almost there, you start feeling your heart racing or you're the last one left alive in a match and just like that shaky, stressful feeling that you get that really triggers that fight or flight response. Um, during that process, your body is actually taking blood away from uh, areas that are not that essential and your body considers fine finger movements not essential. Uh, they consider big muscles like your quads, your glutes, like your fight or flight muscles to really be the essential muscles there. So that's what your blood is getting shunted away from, the fine motor skills and going into the big motor skills. I um, think um, so a really good analogy that Kate always talks about is, you know, the lion analogy. If you're getting attacked by a lion or a tiger, what do you really need? You're not going to need to draw some calligraphy in the moment you're going to need to have all the muscle all your coordination for your big muscles so you can escape you're not trying to write an essay while the tiger's there to convince him you're trying to escape you're trying to run so that's a really good way that you guys can see why hey maybe those clutch situations maybe um, the last round of a really competitive match is maybe causing you to feel those hot or cold hands maybe there is in that 20 minutes of league that you're talking about you got to a stressful or repeated stressful, I guess, situations with your teammates and or team fights. And that might have caused some some subtle stress that might be leading to this. So we have sedentary lifestyle stress. And then what else? They said the pen is mightier than the sword. But I really think in the case of a tiger attack, a sword is going to be the way to go. Yes. Um. Yes. <laughs> Good. Thanks for saying that. I think you're, you're welcome. It's very necessary. So, Anyhow, yeah. so let's talk about overuse. So tendon overuse, which is something that we experience a lot of as gamers. It's associated with repetitive movements and it causes inflammation in small joint areas. And that inflammation can really reduce the ability of blood to kind of uh, get to the tissues that you need. Um, and this is a big problem from both a cold hands perspective as well as an injury um, recovery perspective because if you're not getting the blood you need to the tissues that are being irritated, they're not going to heal as well. And that's how we end up with things like degenerative tendinopathies that uh, uh, the injuries that we deal with can eventually turn into. So we really do want to be mindful of uh, how we are preparing our tissues for extensive use. And that includes strengthening um, the muscles of the forearms and wrist for the endurance um, requirements that gaming uh, actually puts on our tissues. Um, 
So there's another uh, issue that can also be associated with posture. It's called thoracic outlet syndrome. Um, and just basically being in this kind of like forward head, rounded shoulders posture, pinches down all of the arteries and nerves that run through our shoulder area down into our hands. So if you notice that you're getting like aching, numbness, and like coldness down through specific areas of your hands consistently, it might be a, a posture issue coming from your shoulder. So that's kind of why we talk about a lot of the things that we talk about here to really um, get you guys in the correct posture with your shoulder blades tucked in, chest upright, arms in kind of a natural neutral position. Uh, we really are trying to uh, allow for uh, blood and nerve supply to get down uh, into the arms and really help, uh, help you guys out with that kind of problem. So um, I'm on the screen right now is an ana is anatomy and I'm showing them oh, exactly where the nerve or the arteries would get impinged. So actually, let me get all this out of the way. There's just quite a few things here. You guys see how much vasculature, neurovasculature is right at the neck? Yes, it's a big, big mess here. But there's actually three key sites that we're really referencing that can cause that sort of big that sensation of cold hands and uh, what Elliot referenced as thoracic outlet syndrome so there's these two muscles here there's a little triangle right there's this big bundle this big artery here right that I clicked on your right subclavian artery wow anatomy and as you can see if these muscles are tight and and Elliot if you have the forehead maybe you can demonstrate your head is still on the screen um, yeah scoot back a little bit they can't really see you there we go. That forehead position can cause these two muscles to get really tight. And then guess what? The nerve and also the artery will get irritated and you might feel that numbness. So you might feel that coldness in your hands. And then secondly, there's this other position. Look at where, look at Elliot's shoulders. He is rounded and that creates some tightness in what we call the pec minor. Right? There's definitely some pec major stiffness as well. But if this is stiff, look what runs right under it. Again, two big bundles of artery and veins and your nerves. Again, if it's tight, it's going to put pressure there. And then there's one that you can't really see. Well, actually, I can show you guys because I'm pretty good at controlling this apparently. And you can see right here your clavicle or your collarbone. Sometimes this gets too low or gets depressed and because it's too low you might create pressure that's putting or you might cause again the same type of irritation at this bundle over here that I'm highlighting it's either that this is too low or the first rib that I'm trying to highlight is elevated all relevant to your posture to how you sit so everything that you do when you're playing, when you're gaming, when you're sitting, when you're walking, when you're everything as you're sleeping, it influences the stiffness of all of these muscles and the position of these muscles. And if you're not aware of them, as we're trying to help you guys understand, it can cause that pressure on those uh, neurovascular bundles. So that was just a, a quick anatomy lesson for you guys. Now I'm hiding it. Our faces are back here. And let, let's talk. Um, let's talk a little bit about like nutrition. You know, Jake. I, I yeah. know you know you you know this stuff uh, a little better than us. What are some things that they can do differently, maybe with their diet or or just with what they're eating that might help? And and maybe tell us why. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say I know it better than you guys, but um, everything Elliot alluded to was about how gaming and particularly sitting for long periods of time can restrict blood flow. So to improve circulation, getting more movement is important, but also the things that you eat impact that as well. Um, and so if you're eating processed artificial foods, um, fast food, stuff like that, um, a lot of that is empty calories. You're not getting a lot of nutrients, things like polyphenols, antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, all that good stuff that's gonna help promote circulation. And so some good examples of things to eat are um, like fruits, vegetables, um, really any plant-based foods, uh, particularly things like uh, berries. Blueberries is actually one of my favorite foods. Um, mm -hmm. It's got one of the highest antioxidant profiles. It's been shown to improve blood flow, 
specifically even to the brain as well, so it might help with performance. Um, dark chocolate is good. Yep. Just make sure that um, dark chocolate can have a high amount of co uh, caffeine in it as well. Um, so look for higher cocoa options too, like higher than 70%. You're going to get more antioxidants and polyphenols with that, but just be aware of uh, the caffeine effect as well and when you take it. Um, other things are like broccoli, kale, spinach. You can't go wrong with any greens. You may not like it, but a good thing to do is, uh, for instance, kale. I don't really like eating kale, but I put it in smoothies um, with like nice. blueberries and yeah. uh, bananas and other things like that, and I, I don't taste it at all. So um, good way of doing that. Um, getting vitamin E. Vitamin E can help improve circulation. It's in a lot of uh, nuts and seeds like almonds and sunflower seeds, um, and also fish oil. So a lot of the, most people are usually deficient in uh, EPA and DHA. And so taking an official supplement, unless if you eat um, foods that are rich in that, like salmon, um, walnuts, um, and different things like that, um, it might be good to kind of look into to doing that type of supplementation. Plus, it helps with brain health and heart health, too. Um, and then also adding to what Elliot said about caffeine, caffeine increases the stress response. Um, it increases cortisol, um, which is that stress hormone. And it also is vasoconstrictive, so it constricts your blood vessels. So... Um, that goes out through, you know, throughout your body, so that might be contributing to the cold hands as well. So just keep trying to keep that in moderation, um, or maybe not even taking that all and taking a, a break altogether can be a good thing to do. Nice, nice. I love that. I, I think it, it's a really good point to talk about vasoconstriction constriction with caffeine, but also with nicotine, right? I know a lot of um, gamers are also smokers, uh, and, and they don't realize that. Let's or vapors. Or, or vapors, right? And you're dealing Vape with... Gods. Exactly. We got a lot of vape gods out in the gaming space. And, you know, while it's cool maybe to have do, do a lot of smoking <laughs> tricks, um, we have that we just do, smoking is cool. Um, you have to realize that what is it doing to our actual blood vessels? What is the actual physiologic consequence of it? Right. We have vasoconstriction, which means the blood vessel goes from here to here. So what does that mean for the nutrients of your muscles? What does that mean for the ability of your vasculature to, um, to flush out, I guess, inflammatory byproducts when you're healing? Right? So vasoconstriction or nicotine use, uh, this is something I tell a lot of smokers, tell a lot of patients of mine that might be dealing with pain, is that, hey, it can actually slow down healing. We don't realize it, but it can really lengthen the period of time that we're dealing with an issue. So it is definitely maybe a smaller contributing factor yes but still it is something you can consider to cut out temporarily or, or reduce um, moderately so that you can allow yourself to better manage whatever your issue you're dealing with um, but also hey maybe have more warm hands so you can aim better so you can not have to be concerned about how your hands are feeling while you're playing right that's we never want to be thinking about things when we're playing that affects how we perform um so let's just do a, a quick touch up on what are some things that we can do to improve our cold hands elliot do you want to do you want to just tell us what we can do based on everything we talked about yeah there's a couple things you can do so i don't know if you guys have ever seen those like hand warmers that they sell they're a little like uh, packages that you kind of snap and there's a chemical reaction that happens and you kind of rub your hands in them and it uh, just is a nice warm way to get your hands ready to game or if you're experiencing cold hands between games it's a nice way just to kind of warm them up uh, but those can be useful to invest in but what I have here and I don't actually know where I got this I got this at some convention just drop, dropped it in the bag um, but it's an actual power bank that has like a hand warming function on it as well Whoa. so it's really really sweet these things are coming out um, and I would look into getting something like this or even two of them just kind of like hang on between uh, between uh, gaming sessions mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, when you're trying to warm your hands up. So that would be something to invest in. I know that um, Zippo also... is coming out with something like that too, right? I think I saw Oh, really? It. Yeah, like they have a, a portable hand warmer specifically for gaming. So, huh. you know, th that's not a plug. We're, we weren't sponsored by them. It is something that I've Hashtag seen. Hashtag ad, by the way. Um, you know, Zippo, I'm happy to promote it if you want to send it our way. But, you know, it is something to consider, right? Some some product that um, will keep your hands warm prior. You know, I, I think a low barrier uh, activity that you can do is just 
go run your hand through warm water for 45 seconds. Yeah. You know, I know a lot of pros that do that. Um, so great, great start. So we warm our hands. What else do we do? So the best thing you can do for cold hands is just to get moving. So three minutes of intense exercise will really uh, help to kind of even out the blood flow in your body um, and kind of deal with that like sedentary lifestyle factor that we talked about earlier. It'll increase the ability of your heart to pump, um, just the quality of the blood flow to all of your tissues. There's nothing that exercise can't fix, to be honest, and that's why we're physical therapists. Um, but yeah, if you're looking for like a routine to do, there's plenty of them uh, on our YouTube. Um, I'm sure, Matt, you could recommend one or two. Yeah, I'll uh, post in one the, in the chat the notes. right now. Yeah. Boom, we got a warm-up that you can do prior. We can do this one just check those out you know see what you guys think about it try it let us know how it feels you know you can message us you can tag us um, you can record yourself doing it you can you know broadcast it to the world that you're trying it because it's awesome whatever you want um, you can let us know but i think absolutely exercise actually physically warming up your hands and then jake what are the key points about your diet what would you recommend the top three things based on what you mentioned to eat and to be cognizant of up three things so number one would be just trying to eat more nutrient rich foods so things like fruits vegetables um especially particularly around gaming sessions nice it's okay to eat foods that uh, this would be number two so it's okay to eat foods that you know may not be as healthy um that's totally fine just trying to make sure that um, you're doing it in moderation and then doing it around um, during times, you know, around uh, away from gaming. Um, but the third one then would be to, you know, if you're having these issues and it just take take small steps. Like, for instance, if you notice you drink more than 300 milligrams of caffeine a day, maybe lowering that down, um, taking small things out of your diet or adding small things in, like maybe eating more blueberries or things like that. Um, just taking those small steps that can lead to habits that's going to help uh, in the long run. Exactly. So, you know, I think we wrapped that up pretty well. Uh, I, I would say as a last thing, just watch your caffeine and nicotine consumption. Don't go overboard. Um, the next question that we want to get into is also by our friend. Um, but Tweetford in the chat also asked, you know, what is the cause of creaking joints? So that's going to hit two birds with one stone. And I want to I want to help approach this question. So the actual question said that over the past couple of years, my finger joints have gotten more difficult to move. They feel creaky and stiff for the lack of a better description. And there's no pain. He was told this might be arthritis and he wanted to know if there's any way to address this and free up his joints for easier movement. And then as a added question, what's a good length for, th uh, for TheraBands? There's all sorts of shapes and sizes. Okay, so... Um, you know, I think this is a great question. How do we approach or why do we have these creaky sounding joints? Let's listen. You know, why do we have that? Why do we have Roddy Rich hanging around our joints when we play games? Um, and I think that's a really great question because a lot of the times... The reason, the under, uh, well, let's start with the physiology. The underlying reason why we might be dealing with stiffness or creakiness and not feeling pain, I really do think it's a, a question or a consequence of the load that we're placing onto our actual joints when we're playing. So uh, you can think of your joints as becoming slightly irritated from slight overload from the amount of gaming that you're playing leading to an inflammatory response that causes maybe some local swelling in these joints and that causes that sensation of stiffness when you're trying to close when you're trying to move your fingers as you're clicking if there's some subtle swelling from a subtle inflammatory response of course there's going to be a difficulty or lack of proper control with moving your fingers Right? And how does joint irritation occur in the first place? It always comes back to load, right? And what, what prevents overload at our joints in our fingers and our hands? It's the capacity or strength or endurance of our muscles. It always comes back to that. How do we prevent our joints from getting too much compressive stress? Compressive stress meaning this, right? If it's too tired and you're continuing to click, 
there was going to be more irritation at these joints, respective joints here, and that's going to cause that subtle inflammation. And um, if we don't have the endurance to manage three to four hours, six to eight hours, 10 to 12 hours of gaming, then of course there, that inflammation is going to develop. But the question is here, right? Why is there no pain? And that's why I said it might be just slightly overloading in the sense that, hey, it's not getting to the point where it's causing um, enough or significant enough tissue irritation to put pressure on, on local nerves at the joint to create the sensation of pain, but just enough so that it is inflamed, right? If any of us have been climbers before, after we climb, you better believe that it's it's super hard to close our fingers, right? Because there's going to be inflammation, but there's not necessarily pain because... Wow, my voice cracked. But it's not necessarily pain. <laughs> it's the creaky. Uh, creaky. creaky. Oh, your joints. <laughs> no, it's not necessarily pain <laughs> as we close our, our fingers because, hey, we just worked out our, our forearm and our hands and our finger uh, muscles and tendons to the point that it, be, it fatigued and then it began putting this compressive stress on our joints. And in the same way, that happens to when we game. When we're doing this, over and over for eight to ten hours yes it's not that much load we're not hanging on the weight of our body like a 40 to 60 minutes uh, climbing session but after six hours of course your joints are going to feel some of that stress it's pulling over and over and over and over and that's what causes that stiffness that's what causes that creakiness so the way that you address that is one you have to do exercises on a regular basis. I'll show you guys some. Um, but number two, you also can stretch regularly to think about undoing the stress, right? If these muscles tend to stiffen up, right? After we done, we're done climbing or gaming for a while, we, we might notice our hands uh, in this sort of like weird claw hand position because we were so used to maintaining that for the X hours that we were playing. So we want to undo that because there's adaptative adaptive wow that's not a word adaptive changes adaptative adaptative <laughs> changes no adaptive changes to our forearm muscles that we want to undo so you know you do these stretches you do these stretches um we'll, we'll post the six minute stretch in the description when this video comes out but you can always check that in our youtube uh in our videos in, on youtube um doing that in between games doing that whenever there's downtime if you're dead and you, there's the rest of the round to play in Valorant or if you are waiting in the lobby for the next game or whatever there's always going to be downtime you can quickly do a stretch and that will go a long way to help that sensation you can even do some of that, that now and feel the difference doing that 6 minute routine that I have on YouTube do it now and, and really see how it feels you will immediately notice the difference um, and then let's just get to the actual exercises right there's things like the digi flags, this guy, the thing I always recommend. You can do this, this. So uh, we've talked about this a lot. Um, with all finger exercises, you want to do higher repetition, higher amounts, and this is one of them that you can do. You know, three sets of twenty, four sets of twenty on a regular basis using this. Uh, squeezing a towel that's a really great option something else I came up with recently that I, I was really proud of was the was the towel curl wait the towel finger curls right so oh with my, the kettlebell yeah, yeah I saw that my, my finger smart. So, so you can so smart you can uh, <laughs> you can put your keyboard on this and then you can just you know use your fingers to pull the keyboard towards you right and what you're trying to do is load up or add a weight to the end of the towel so that your fingers have to work. It's like, it really is like the uh, toe or foot rehab that we do with a lot of basketball players, a lot of like uh, athletes um, to strengthen your intrinsic hand muscles or intrinsic foot muscles for them. But for us, it's our gaming muscles. So uh, towel curls are a great option. Of course, doing dumbbell wrists and finger curls are, are always uh, a staple. Um, but yeah, I, I hope that answers the question. And I know there was a Theraband question at the end. Elliot, do you want to do you want to get to that? Yeah. So the question was, 
Uh, is there a good length for TheraBands? There's all sorts of shapes and sizes. This is true. There's all sorts of lengths, all sorts of shapes, and all sorts of sizes of TheraBands. So a couple different types of TheraBands. I don't actually have any on me right now. Um, but you have the just regular TheraBand that's one long ribbon, um, and you can just use that for a lot of different exercises. You have TheraBands that are tied into a loop, um, and then you have uh, TheraBands that you can tie with different uh, loops at different lengths and things like that to do different types of exercises. But let's talk about the colors. So colors on TheraBands usually go from lighter to darker based on how uh, tense that band actually is and how tough it is to stretch. Um, so if you're starting out with TheraBand exercises, you should probably start with a lighter color and kind of gradually work your way up to a heavier color. But it depends on what you're doing too. So if you're wanting to do more uh, reps, probably choose a lighter color. If you're doing less reps, choose a heavier color. Um, and depending on the length is just what you're trying to do with it. If you're trying to do rows, you're going to want a longer TheraBand. If you're doing just kind of like external rotation exercises, you're going to want a shorter TheraBand um, just so you get the right amount of tension. But you can always choke up on it to get more tension on it. Um, so yeah. I'm demonstrating so, the external rotations here. Boom. This is my, one of my perfect. favorite ones for gaming. And then I, I really like the TheraBand pullovers as a gaming break stretch. It's just yeah. one of my favorite for opening the chest up because we're always in this rounded position. So I pull it apart, bring it all the way around behind me like this. My thumbs are facing away. And then I bring it back. And I do 10 of those. I hold for about three seconds at the end. And yeah, it really just feels just complete. I feel like I can breathe better after I do that. You guys can try it and see how it feels for you. Um, yeah, and would you want to add anything else, Jake? To uh, sure, like yeah. Fireband. Just the, uh, like, cause, I mean, you can get an exercise in how many reps do you do, how many sets do you do. Like Ellie had said for, um, or Matt had said as well, kind of keep their rep range high, especially starting off, um, and keeping the overall volume kind of low. So if you're doing maybe two, three sets, uh, but over time, like the frequency, maybe doing it like, um, depending on what it is, you know, maybe at, at least three times a week, um, and then just kind of like maybe increasing from there. Uh, but always keep in mind, I try to call it kind of like playing the edge. You know, when you're doing um, a set, it's kind of like pushing to slight discomfort, but you're not going over the edge um, to where you're overstressing the musculature too much. But obviously you're not on the flip side uh, doing something, doing not enough that's going to make an effect. Um, so keeping that in mind um, and just making sure that, you know, you got to make it consistent. If you're not doing it, then the adaptations that you get, they're going to go away. Um to get that decline phase so a good thing to do is what's called anchoring is you just anchor the habit that you want to make to um, another task so for instance like right before gaming um, you know you would basically do your exercises um, then you go into gaming so then every time you do that you can try to anchor that and that'll kind of help it make it more consistent exactly exactly I really like that um, metaphor uh, playing the edge or feeling out where the edge is right because yeah. if you you know, go too far, you fall off the cliff, right? If you push too hard and play too long, your hand muscles fall off the cliff and they get injured. Uh, yep. so, it's even a perfect analogy for like uh, burnout and stuff too, you know? Exactly, you exactly. You play too much, so right. all about balance. It's all about balance. Definitely don't want to jump over the edge, and a lot of us do. You know, we don't think about, think about yeah, the ramifications yeah, yeah. of playing for X amount of hours. What that does to us, you know, not only physically but mentally. Uh, and we can get into a really long discussion there. But um, I know we have one more question. And this was a, a question from Jake or for Jake. Uh, and maybe you can elaborate and, and let us know. Yeah, I think it goes along with what you guys, the questions that were already asked. It's kind of like, you know, if I'm gaming for long periods of time, I find my legs getting sore. Um, personally, I found this myself. So what can I do to reduce or prevent that? And so it gets back to everything we've all talked about, about the sedentary behavior, just really minimizing that, getting up, uh, doing the activity breaks, um, just, you know, whether it's every hour, at least getting just a couple minutes or more than that, um, doing a warm up before gaming. Um, but then also this idea of like cool down, like what you do after the session. So like doing some myofascial release, like if you have a foam roller, maybe rolling out the legs a little bit, other areas, um, or I mean, even if you don't have anything, you can do a, a self-massage, you know, um, just kind of rolling out or massaging the legs or whatever area, you know, might be uh, irritated. 
Yeah. What are typical muscles, Matt, that you think uh, get sore the most often or get tight because of the postures that we're in while we game? Ooh, I think one of the most common things that I've noticed are your at your neck here, your upper trap. Um, a lot of the times it's because of, you know. No, in your just, legs, in your legs. Oh, in our legs, in our legs. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I feel like, um, hmm, maybe, maybe it's. Uh, I get, based on some of the people that I worked with, their calves, surprisingly, really? yeah, surprisingly, yeah. Um, I, I think it might be because a lot of people's legs are hanging over the edge or they're sitting on them. They have their knee bent and they're actually sitting sort of on their calf, you know. Yeah, well, if you this... sit on your calf, you just starve it of blood. Yeah, long yeah. Time. You just end up in this kind of like ischemic state. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. I do that too, though. What about yeah? What about you? What what? Sort I think of... I think the psoas is a huge culprit. True. Um, true. What, what, uh, what is so the that's... psoas, by the way, for people that might not know what that is? Right. So that's a muscle that sits right at the uh, crease of your hip. There, it attaches to your low back. It attaches to your leg, and it bends your uh, leg forward. Um, so it's a it's a pretty important muscle, and it can contribute to both low back pain and hip pain. So um, and when we sit in kind of like a position where we're forward. A lot uh that joint gets really uh the angle closes down um like this so that muscle isn't going very far and it, muscles that stay in uh kind of a shortened position for a long time end up with all of these restrictions and they get tight and when you go to stand up it rounds your back um and it can cause a lot of pain i think uh the psoas muscle is a really good uh really good muscle to target when you're when you're trying to deal with like leg pain gaming do you guys think like uh like fidgeting is a good intervention to do if you're changing i would say changing your posture is a really good uh thing to do i wouldn't stay like i mean you'll notice like if you've been sitting on your own leg for a long time like that you can't walk after you do that so that's kind of a good gauge for you to know how long you've been in one posture um but yeah moving from side to side kicking your leg up and down that one, or like, yeah, just like uh, quick tapping uh, of your foot, yeah, like like that. Yeah, like tapping tap. foot. Yeah, oh. yeah, I think so. I, I would, I would definitely feel it's okay movement. with that. Yeah, as long as it's not right, like um, you're not doing it all the time. It's totally fine, right? I, and I think, uh, especially for me, my parents hated when I did that at the table, right? Obviously, when oh, I'm yeah. eating, right? They're like, stop fidgeting <laughs> right like they obviously don't I want do that. not control the leg the leg but, does what it wants you know with gaming that's actually a really good point it's okay in between your games when you're waiting for the lobby just do that right you get a little more blood pumping all the way throughout your entire body and hey that might help with the hands that might help with your general circulation it might even help with better circulation to the brain so you perform better so um yes yeah. i think that's a great recommendation it's fine to Some fidget. People, Just don't go Some crazy. people, I understand it's hard to get up after a game or things like that, right? You got your headset on, your mm. your gear, you're locked in. But yeah, that's a good idea too. Maybe just moving your arms around more, or just doing some sort of movement. Yeah, just hit the shimmy. Ooh, it's, oh, a little shimmy, little shake. Yeah, how we do? Oh. <laughs> but yeah, I think those are great questions, uh, and I, I think we got through a lot of them. So we went over today, cold hands with gaming. We also went over why creakiness occurs in the finger joints as well as, you know, why our legs potentially get sore and what you can do to reduce and prevent that or even address that. So if anyone, you know, has any final questions, uh, we're going to open it up to anyone else now. We'll, we'll answer anyone's questions. Um, but if you guys haven't already, please follow not eSport trainer anymore, Jake Middleton, GG, at Twitter. He's, you know, he has a facelift now. He um, he still has his long hair there in, in on his Twitter picture, as you can see, um, so you won't get confused. Uh, so, so it looks good. Um, and, John Stale. you know, don't fall, uh, make sure you follow 1HP underscore medic on Twitter. Follow HP for Gamers, that's me. Follow Kate McGee PT. And then follow someone random, you know, just, just see, just open a random, up, just a random person, just, Make just type day. someone's name, Nick, um, King, you know, and Twitter and just follow him because, Hey, maybe he'll add a perspective in your life that you never thought.